Hello all, welcome to the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert Part 17. In this video, we will look at Railgun Basics. This video is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. Uh, if you are interested, please visit securitytube.net slash smfe and our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 countries around the world so you can join them if you'd like. <laughs> and this video is made freely available to the community on Security Tube as part, our, part of our vision mission to provide quality yet free infosec education to one and all okay so we have looked at a bunch of interesting metapreter scripts in the last couple of videos right and post exploitation modules which are phasing out metapreter scripts now basically what these provide is the ability to run your code on the remote compromise system but here's a quick question is it possible for the attacker to call arbitrary functions in various DLLs on the victim system or even upload his own DLL and call functions from that? This is where Railgun comes to your rescue. So what is Railgun? Railgun is a metapreter extension that allows you to load and run code from any DLL present on the victim system. This can be native DLLs which ship with Windows or something you may upload on the victim system or DLLs which are available with installed application programs. Railgun was released by Patrick in the Metasploit mailing list and since then has had a high rate of adoption among people writing metapreter scripts in the community. So how can you access Railgun? Well, you could either go ahead and use it in Metapreter post-exploitation modules or Metapreter scripts, which is the older generation. Or you can go into the interactive IRB mode and use Railgun from that. So let's look at a quick demo of using Railgun. Now, basically, what we need to do is find different Windows APIs which we can call using Railgun. Now in this case, what I want to do is call a simple Windows API called Lock Workstation. What does this do? Well, this goes ahead and locks the victim out from his own workstation. So let me go ahead to our attacker machine. So this is the attacker machine. And the victim machine is already here. This is our Windows XP machine. And if I do a quick get UID, we already compromised. We are a user on the system. So to enter IRB mode, hit IRB and hit enter. Now, if you want to access Railgun, it's basically client.railgun. And then you need to mention the DLL in which you want to call the appropriate function. Now, lock workstation is basically in the user32 DLL. So this is what we're going to call right now. So I type in user32 and then I mention the actual function, which is lock workstation, right? And you can keep looking at this screen here. Right. And if I go back here, if you notice, the station was automatically locked, right? Fantastic. So basically, Railgun gives us the flexibility and power to call arbitrary functions in DLLs on the victim system. Now, in this example, I had actually called a function within a DLL which required no arguments. What about functions which require an argument, right? So 
here is what we can actually do is in that case the way in which we invoke railgun is client dot railgun dot then the dll name such as user 32 and then the function name along with arguments so the next demo we'll run is basically with a function call called net user del which deletes a user account on the server now for this one of the first things we would require to do is let's change our account so we had actually let's quit matter better and just go ahead and exploit the system again now we use the net api exploit and this basically gives us system access on the remote computer right now let's go back to the slides now what are the different inputs net user del requires the first is server name and the second is username right so basically if you want to delete a user on the same server or on the local machine you can actually put server name as null and the username needs to be the user whose account you would like to delete now as far as arguments are concerned on windows or other api platforms you basically have in parameters and out parameters in parameters basically are arguments through which you pass input to the function now memory allocation is managed for data pointers as far as in point in parameters are concerned apart from that for everything else basically railgun encodes it into machine readable format and calls the appropriate apis most of your windows constants and all of that have already been defined in railgun and you can use them as is now as far as the out parameters are concerned they are always data pointers and memory allocation is again managed entirely by railgun as far as the out param is concerned if there is one then you need to specify the size of the buffer which railgun needs to create and actually pass to the appropriate api accessing return values now as one can imagine return values are of utmost importance when you want to run a series of successive apis and probably string all of that together in the form of a meaningful program now return values in railgun come back as a hash data structure in which the return value is keyed using return the error code is keyed using get last error and any of the out parameters if there are any in that function call are returned with the appropriate names with which you define them in the railgun definition files right okay enough of theory let's go ahead and try this out so in this case what we are basically going to use is the net api 32 dll right so let's go ahead and try this out i go back to my metal predator session enter the interactive mode and then use client dot railgun to access railgun then i need to mention the dll name uh, net user dell is in net api 32 and then you have net user del right now in order to pass null basically in the case of railgun we're just going to pass nil right after that we need to mention the specific user account we want to delete on this system so here's what i'm going to do let me log in as a different user first right security tube hopefully I remember right so we are all logged in oops just a second right and here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go to control panel and look at the list of user accounts 
right? So it has security tube admin, metasploit was another admin as well. Now let me go back here and actually mention metasploit as the account I want to delete. Right, so I have two arguments. The first is null, which is sent in as nil. And the second is the name of the user account, which is metasploit. Let's run this. And we get a return zero, which is typically good because that kind of indicates things went well. And let's go back here again. And now if you notice, the metasploit account was deleted entirely. Right. And the funny thing is Windows did not complain. Nothing seemed out of place. Right. So this is basically how you can use Railgun. Call different functions and different DLLs available on the remote system. Now, of course, this is not really limited to the two examples which I just showed you. You could ideally find a lot of interesting APIs like locking the workstation up, deleting accounts creating new user accounts, adding people to groups and whatnot, and string together pretty complicated scripts. And if you look at a lot of post exploitation modules and Mudasploit, you would see that they've made a judicious use of Railgun in doing all of this. Now, that's all I had in mind for this video. In the next video, we will look at how to use Railguns to add functions which currently are not supported by the Railgun definition files. So this video is part of the SMFE courseware. If you find this interesting, if you want to probably take up our certification, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead.